I consider I'm an expert on playing a guitar with short fingers. Now, if you look at that, that's an average disposable glove, which you can buy anywhere in a hardware shop or whatever. And you can see how much shorter my fingers are, or how much they need to fill the glove. So that's where my expertise is. So I take this glove off now, and I'm going to I'm going to try and talk to you about uh, playing uh, the guitar with short fingers. And I consider that I've got some of the shortest fingers, certainly that I've ever known on, on a, a, a guitarist, an adult guitarist. So. I think that gives me quite a, an edge on talking about it. Now, I'll ask you to sort of bear with me because um, I, there's a lot of people that upload onto YouTube and they can, uh, they can stop their videos, they can modify them, they can change the things that they're doing and correct them. But being old, I'm not very good with technology and so I'm going to have to run this all the way through. Now, um, in order to help me, again, old age problem, I've got a few uh, short notes around, so you might see me looking all over the place because I've got them dotted all over in front of me. But anyway, so I'm not sure what I'm doing with the video, but I'll try and give you a good rundown on uh, if you've got short fingers, then I've got to be an expert because I've got them. Now, um, I'm going to try and explain my difficulties to you how I've overcome them some of them and what got me hooked on playing the guitar in the first place and a few funny episodes in my early life um, so stick around and please subscribe give me a chance to come back and give you some more information and hit the bell but I don't really know what hit the bell means because I couldn't find it but anyway just bear with an old chap while he goes through his rigmarole right um, now, I don't wish to criticise other people on YouTube because there's some absolutely brilliant people. And But I was amazed when I saw quite a lot of videos on really good guitarists telling people how to play with short fingers. And I thought, well, how the heck can they know? I can because I can prove it. Anyway, I mean, so I thought what I'd do, I'll just I'll quote a few of them just quickly. It says... Reach four frets with the first and second finger. Well, I'll show you that. Look, there's the first finger. Here's my second. Oh, am I going to jump to reach the third? To reach the fourth is impossible. Look. No way. That's there's my second finger. So, I don't know where they get that from? Then somebody said they they've kids they've seen kids or children seven and eight years old playing the guitar. And they're amazing. Well, I've seen those as well. But when I've looked, they've all got longer fingers than me anyway. I've known six-year-olds quite a lot that have got longer fingers than me. It's just that I'm a small chap. Anyway, um, one other thing was it's somebody telling you how to stretch your fingers. Wow. Well, if I'd have known that, I'd have tried that on my legs years ago. Because I'm only, I'm less than five foot tall. <laughs> anyway, so... Let's uh, crack on and um, I'll just say to those guitarists, look, I want you to, one minute, all you people out there with lovely long slender fingers playing the guitar, you're brilliant, but you've, given a, you've been given a head start. But look at your hand and imagine removing the first joint off of each finger. Just imagine it. And what you're left with is a size, size fingers that I've got. And I'll check out many times putting my hand on other people's hands. Right. So, first of all, um, my middle finger is uh, just two and a half inches from the tip to in there. It's not very long. Um, now, I've also got curved nails. Can you see them? That was due to a medical treatment I had when I was young. So if you're picking a guitar, it's quite easy for my nails to get hooked under the strings and catching them. It doesn't play them, so I have to keep my nails fairly short. So I've learned to overcome a lot of these difficulties, and I'm going to try and explain one or two of them. Um, so if you love if you love music, which I do, 
and it's a wonderful way of of expressing yourself and, and lifting yourself when you're down and just feeling great when you're doing something when you're playing and singing just to yourself even so but to those people that got short hands or short short fingers I should say and small hands <coughs> excuse me what you've got to do is you've got to persevere and not give up you'll come across a few problems which the people with longer fingers wouldn't get but persevere and stick at it so um, my first of all I would say if you've got short fingers get a guitar, get a guitar with a thin neck uh, this one is uh, quite, I think it's about 41 mil. Um, I couldn't find anything a lot, uh, lot smaller than that. If on the other hand you've got quite fat fingers, you must allow a little bit wider neck because otherwise you'll be hitting two strings when you only want to hit one string. So bear that in mind. It's compromising. Um, now, let me try and explain. I've got, this is a travel guitar by the way which I absolutely love. My son bought it for me and it's only like, it's less than three quarters size I think, but it suits me because I'm such a small bloke. Anyway, let me try and explain a few of the things difficult. If you look at, if you look at a, a, a person with long fingers and, and they're pressing down on the guitar strings, when you've got long fingers, you're actually coming down vertically like, like this, straight onto the top of the string and you can hover over the strings and hover and just press down well that's magic if you can do that but um, I certainly can't on on the uh, first second third string I can play down vertically but when you get farther away when you get to the sixth, the sixth string um, sometimes your fingers are almost flat because you can't reach to bend that first string down and press down so you're coming in quite flat and that in itself is a problem because you're in danger of getting a sort of a dull sound and also um, you're, you might hit another string next to it when you don't want to. The point of coming down vertically is you're getting a clean hit on the string. So that's some of the difficulties. Now, um, I one chord in particular in an open chord that can be a problem is a G7. And, and that's uh, the first fret on the first string and the, the um, second string on a fifth string and the third on the, the sixth string. Now, uh, I have to twist my wrist underneath, right up underneath like this to get to that. I can't just come straight down on the top. And look, that's the sort of angle that I have to get. And it's quite difficult. Now, when you play open chords, um, I, I'll just show you uh, one or two of them, you know, like, I don't know what you know, and I'm not trying to tell you to suck eggs, but if you're a complete beginner, um, I, this is a C, A minor, uh, E, G, D, and so on. And when, one of the uh, chords that give a lot of people trouble is an F chord, because it's, or an F, and it's the series of chords after that, because it's a bar chord. And everybody lives in absolute fear of a bar chord, but if you take your time and you keep practicing and, and moving your wrist around to get to keep get your fingers in front more, you'll find that it's not too bad. And because I'm hunched up trying to give a torture, I probably won't won't be able to do it too well. But look. So that's the string you're trying to hit, and that's the one that's difficult when you've got short fingers. But the thing with the it's not an open chord, it's an easy open chord. And if you move, look, I'll play it with those fingers there. If you, if you, if you can see that, so there, and those two. If you, if you move it up, you get an F. F sharp, G, G sharp, A. Once you've got the hang of that F chord, you can play loads more chords all the way up because it's exactly the same shape. The only difference is, with it, instead of the not that piece there on the guitar being the, the base of the chord, it's your finger with the bar in, one finger, there, all the way across all the strings, and that is really difficult for a short finger person. But you can do it, if I can do it, you can do it, so persevere. Now, another thing, one of the things I found, in open chord, that this, it's not too bad, 
But when you, like me, my voice has changed because I've got old, and I have to often change it, the, the key of the chord, and I have to put a capo on, or a capo. I, I put a capo on, I put a capo on when I go outside. But look, um, when you choose a capo, if you're short fingered, bear this in mind. If you get, for instance, this one, uh, I'm not trying to advertise anything, if you get one like that, that's quite a, a big distance there. And if you're short fingered, sometimes you've got to put your finger over the capo to be able to reach. Now, n people with long fingers don't have that trouble, they just treat the capo or capo as the knot of the guitar. And then they can they can just sort of play in behind it or below it. Now, if I'll put this on just to show you if you can see what I'm trying to show you. So if you put your cape on there and and um, your turn now one chord in particular for me is a problem is B7, which is quite an easy chord if it's open, but it's not a difficult one. But when you come to play it with a cap on, my finger this thing has to go over to reach because I can't do it there because the capo's in the way because I haven't got enough length of finger to be able to get there to do that so there's all sorts there's, here's another type here um, that whoops, wrong way round see I quite like that quite like that, it's a nice firm one but the trouble is again the capo gets in your way if you're trying to reach things like this because you don't need it if you've got long fingers you can get over there but so one of the ways I've thought about this for ages I tried people people had a pencil with elastic bands I tried getting leather thongs from a shoe and wrapping it around everything to try and make the distance of, away from the neck of the guitar very small so I came up with this, I found this one, I'm not advertised, I don't even know what it's called and I wouldn't tell you where I got it because I'm not advertising anything. But this had a piece of rubber on, which is, oh, another 6-7mm thick. So what I did, and I spent a long time trying to think about this, I, I got some very thin rubber, I took the old rubber off and I put the thin rubber on. Now when I put this one on there, again if you can see, keeping it don't overlap too much on the first string like that now and you do need to keep a capo fairly tight up to the fret otherwise you get a buzzing noise so now B7. because I, I'm I'm not having to stretch over a capo because it's so low I can reach without sort of hooking my hand over it so those are things that um, you know, all things to, when you come across a problem, one lesson I've learned in life, you think, there's got to be a solution to this, I'm going to find a way around it. And that's how you have to attack a lot of things in life, especially guitar, if you've got short fingers. Now, another thing, when people do, I'll show you another chord, a, an A chord. And again, when you move it up the fret, and you put a bar, your finger across as a bar, it becomes all sorts of changes so that that is a I've seen a lot of people when they play that they actually if you imagine I've got three fingers already there because I can't do it with that they actually bend that finger to get the fifth string because they often kill this the sixth string but I can't do that I have to be I got to be straight and it's not the easiest chord in the world for me to play but I do get it and a chord that I have great difficulty is the D the D when you you change it into a, a, an F or whatever G, you're moving it up the, up the fretboard because when it moves up one one up or half one fret or half turn or whatever you then have to you've got to get two fingers down and I just can't reach them so sometimes you get away with just playing four strings the first second third and fourth and muting the uh, fifth and sixth so that you can't hear them because they wouldn't sound right if you weren't playing the chord quite correctly. So there's all sorts of ways that you, you have to try and get over these problems. Now, I'm just going to tell you a few things because I want you to be interested enough to not only learn to play the guitar but uh, and also to try and find out some of the ways you can get around the problems. And I openly invite any of you to 
hit that bell and subscribe and come back to me and tell me if you've solved any solutions that I don't know about or that I can help you with any other ones. Now, um, I'll just tell you a few things. I was, uh, what started me on on the guitar, and it's a long time ago, I was fortunate enough to be around a uh, late teenager when all the music, the greatest period of music ever, and ever will be, and you've got the top band like the Beatles and people like this absolutely wonderful time and oh, you're in heaven as a teenager and going out to dance and things. So it's really the probably as much the Beatles as anybody that started me and I thought I'm gonna have a go at that. So I used to go around now you might find this you might find this hard to believe now, but I do. But I actually had long hair right down to my collar, really long just trying to mimic the Beatles. I had a Beatles suit which was cut all around the neck here and I had winkle picker shoes and if you don't know what they are uh, they're highly pointed and not something you want to kick anybody with but I had them all and I went around and I thought I was, oh, I was great, I was a top kid and we used to go to every Saturday, Friday or Saturday there was a dance in all the villages, look, look in the paper, there's no internet and all this then, it was look in the paper, see where there was a dance and off we go, a gang of mates, go to these dances and every one of them was a live group, they were playing all these numbers while the trogs and the kinks and people like this and some of them are brilliant and some of them are pathetic and how they got out of those village halls alive, I don't know the bad ones, but they did. Well. In those days, I don't know what they do now. I haven't been to a disco. I've got a slip disco, but I haven't been to a disco. Uh, in those days, I'd, we'd all go around and be looking for girls. And by the way, girls in my younger days meant all females. Uh, uh, mainly, if you said girl, you were talking about an 18, 19, 20, 22, 23 year old woman. But they were everybody, even in the songs, it's all referring to females. And uh, anyway, you go. I'd go up to a girl. Now I had this all ready because I wasn't a tall, dark, handsome man that every woman dreamed of. So I had this sort of all ready in my mind what was going to happen. So I'd go up to a girl and I'd say, excuse me, would you care for a dance? And she'd say, no, thank you. So I'd say, oh, sorry, I'm awfully sorry, dear. I didn't see your wooden leg. <laughs> that would tear me up anyway. It was a bit of a consolation for being turned down. Anyway, um, so let me finish by saying you must persevere and find solutions and you'll get through and you'll begin to play songs. Try, try if, get a few songs off the internet which are only two chords and just start from there. If you want any help, come back to me. Now, I've got one thing to say before I end and I want to say to... Um, to <laughs> Chaps, blokes who are thinking of getting hitched or newly hitched, recently married, whatever, I want to give you the benefit of my life's experience by saying you must learn these two words and this is what you have to learn to say. Yes dear, yes dear, yes dear and you'll be alright. Well thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed some of it. Um, and if you do hit that bell, wherever it is, and subscribe to my this channel, um, I would love to come back and give you some more advice and help you. And anybody, who, if you think I'm a bit of an old twit, say so. You know, I can take it. I've had a lot of things to cope with in my life. <laughs> anyway, I wish you all the best. Good luck. And don't be put off because you've got short fingers. Cheerio. Good luck. <laughs>